Hey, WordPress community, it's Sam here from Barn2. And today I want to show you a few ways that you can finally organize your WordPress media library. If you're anything like me, you probably uploaded hundreds of images and other file types to your WordPress media library. But unlike your computer, WordPress provides very few tools to keep things organized. And you end up with a frustrating experience anytime that you want to find a file that you're just sure you already added. Now, there is a search bar, but that's unlikely to help when most images have random file names like screenshot 212 or something like that. So what you really need is a kind of folder structure and a way to categorize and tag your files to make them easier to find in the future. So here's a little preview of what I'll be covering today. The first plugin can organize all your files into a document library. The main advantage of this option is that your files can also be accessible on the front end of your site if you want them to be. Next, there's a plugin strictly meant for organizing files within the media library itself on the back end. It has these neat folders and other great features we'll take a look at. And finally, I'll show you a few extra free plugins, which add some small but useful functions to help with organization. So let's take a look at the first one now. The plugin is called Document Library Pro, and just so you're aware, there's also a free version called Document Library Lite, but I'll be showcasing the Pro version today so you can see its full potential. If you're curious about how the plugin works, you can have a look at our front end demo pages like I'm doing now, or you can even create your own admin demo, which will allow you to test it out for yourself. I've linked everything below, and if you do decide to purchase the plugin, it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee so you can try it out for yourself risk-free. As you can see in this demo, the plugin creates a front-end library for all your files, which are stored as documents in WordPress. And they're similar to posts in a way, but unique to this plugin. The plugin offers a number of great display options, including a table layout, great for providing a lot of extra information and download links, as well as filters and a search bar up the top. Or you can use this grid layout, which is much better for images or PDFs, in my opinion. In both cases, you can enable folders, which will open or collapse based on your selection. This resembles the experience of a file manager on your computer and can be a great way to keep things organized. You can choose to display this document library on the front end of your site, or if you prefer, you can keep it private using a separate plugin called Password Protected Categories. Both of these plugins can be purchased as a bundle to get yourself a discount at checkout. The additional plugin can be set up with passwords, or you can create roles or user permissions, allowing only certain people into the protected content across your site. Getting back to the point of this video, we want to organize the media library. So to do this, first install Document Library Pro, then follow these steps. Once you've installed and activated the plugin, you can go to your media library and I recommend switching from this grid layout to this list view. Then you can select as many files as you would like using the bulk select, and you can add them to your document library using this option here from the dropdown. Click apply, and now all of these items that you just selected have been added to your document library, which you can find by going to documents and clicking all documents. Now, as you can see, we've just added these images here. And if we want to edit the title, so for example, this one's got a messy title, let's go in and edit that here. And we can edit all of the different parameters just like we would a post on WordPress. So you can update the title, the description, the summary, and crucially, you can also add these documents to document categories, which you can create by clicking add new category. I've already created one for product images. So I'm going to add this to the product images category. You can also do it for tags. The reason I say this is crucial is because if you want to make your documents easy to find later, the categories and tags are super helpful and they form the basis of the folder structure, which you can enable in your settings. Go back to your documents. And if you want to add more items to the same category, you can bulk select them, click on edit, apply, and choose the category. Then click update. Now all of these recently added documents are in the product images category. 
just so you're aware, the plugin will create a document library page. And at first, you may not like the look of it, but we can change all of those things in settings. There is a detailed video about the document's different display settings, which I'm linking to in the cards on the video right now, but I'll show you the basic settings now. Go to Documents, Settings, and from the top, scroll down to Document Lists, and here's where you can choose what page the document library will be displayed on. You can also use a short code to display it on any page of your choosing. Here, you can choose the default layout, whether it's gonna be a table or a grid layout, like I mentioned earlier. A little further down in folders, you can enable the display of the document library folders, which will make it easy to navigate through the different categories of your documents. Scroll all the way down to search, and you can enable the search box above the library or below it if you want, and leave the rest of the settings as they are. Then scroll all the way to the top and choose document tables. If you're using the table layout, you can also enable category and tag filters by scrolling down to here and selecting custom filters and then writing these little short codes here, doc underscore categories and then a comma and doc underscore tags. This just tells the plugin what information it needs to add to the filter. Then save all of those changes so once again, if you want to see a lot more information about each document, the table layout is ideal. But if I go back to the general settings and switch it to the grid layout, then this is a different way of displaying the files. I think I prefer the table view in this case, especially because you can preview the items using this link here to view. And you can view the images. Many of you who came to this video would prefer to simply tidy up things on the back end of your site, and I hear you. So this next plugin is going to do just that, and even a little bit more. It's called Filebird, and there are both free and premium versions available, with the paid version being a one-off lifetime purchase for a very reasonable price. You can easily install it, just like any other free plugin, by searching for Filebird in the WordPress plugin directory. Then once activated, go to the media library and you'll see this new folder area on the left hand side. You can create new folders and then bulk select items to add them to a folder. With the pro version, you can also create subfolders. And very quickly, you can see how this can improve the organization of files in your media library. And if you click on the uncategorized items here, you can see which items still need to be added to your folders. So again, you can bulk select and drag and drop them into the new folders that you want to create. You can find the plugin settings page over on the left here with Filebird, and you can see all of the different options that are enabled when you upgrade to Pro. Click on settings here, and you have an option to enable a different file system for each user, which is really handy, or you can just have one file system that everyone will see. With the pro version, you can enable breadcrumbs and you can change the theme if you so desire. There are a few additional tools and you can import and export data using this tab here. You can read more about this plugin and its features in the wordpress.org page linked below. In terms of organization, deleting unused or duplicate files is a great way to keep things neat and tidy. You could do this by manually selecting all of the files that you don't want and deleting them, but there are better ways to do this. I think the Media Cleaner plugin provides a much faster way to delete unused media from WordPress, as well as fixing broken entries. With an internal trash feature, you can preview and confirm changes before permanently deleting anything. Plus, Media Cleaner uses smart analysis to ensure compatibility with specific plugins and themes. Another option is the Media Library Assistant, which is useful for categorizing and tagging your media files. This is actually a free plugin only with no pro version. It works by adding a taxonomy to the Media Library, which can be used to create the tags and categories. I also highly recommend keeping a backup of your WordPress Media Library. You can use a plugin like Updraft, which has a free version available for backing everything up. This is essential for protecting valuable media files from getting deleted during maintenance. 
In addition to this, you don't want to lose anything in case your WordPress site breaks down and you have to restore it to an older version. And it doesn't hurt that it has over 6,900 five-star reviews. I hope this tutorial helped you out today. If it did, I'd appreciate you supporting our work by liking this video. Here's a link to Document Library Pro where you can test out the demo for yourself. And if you need more help with setup, check out this video next. And of course, thanks for watching.